So let's call this meeting to order. The uh, board of directors meeting this ju July the 5th. And I want to remind everyone this meeting is being recorded. We post on our YouTube channel at a later date. Are there any additional agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move on. Hello, oh, Shelly. Sir, sorry, I'm late. Is there any declaration of conflict of interest? Seeing none. Then I have a motion that the uh, minutes of the LPRCA Board of Directors meeting held June 7, 2023, be adopted as circulated. I need to move her to second. Peter and Dave. Is there any further discussion? Are there any corrections required or omissions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Those in favor. That's carried. So there's no business arising from previous minutes. A review of committee minutes, none. Correspondence, none. So we're going to go to the development applications. The uh, Section 28 regulation approved permits and the end. I'll let you speak to that. Good evening, everyone. Um, the LPRCA staff have approved 24 applications for development since the June Board of Directors meeting. The information has been provided to you in the report. And also, um, the map on page 16 shows where in the watershed the applications have been approved. If you have any questions, I can answer them for you. Yes, Doug. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, Leanne, I. Page 13 in the agenda, it refers to Brown Street in Cordova and uh, part lot 13. And I guess we, we today we dealt with lot 15 that hasn't yet been approved, but apparently they have an application. And my question to you is uh, the hazard land that goes through both or all of those lots a particular area but do you know that are the, do you have a map the contours on through the chair yes okay three uh, maybe i could ask but i wanted that i like to see that because the this particular one is two lots to the west and then your thing here you say that they they meet the slope requirements so through the chair 159 Brown Street is on the north side of the road. So it's out of the hazard land from the lake. And adjacent to it, the east, is um, the new municipal drain that they're constructing. Highway 6 drain. Highway 6 drain. So this okay. is on the opposite side. Okay, hold on. The map I was looking at today, lot 13, fronts on the lake. So this is part lot 13. This is concession and lot. So lot 13 is going to be encompass a lot of 91 assets. Okay, well maybe and uh maybe I could see the contour in that figure. I'm, I'm just kind of curious where the and how what how old are the contour maps we use for the hazard land marking? Off the top of my head, um the LIDAR mapping. 2018, and then the fair shoreline assessment mapping was done in 2020. Okay. New ish. All right. Well, yeah, okay. Any good. further questions for the end? Do. Thanks, Jay. Just a quick question. Page yeah. 10. The uh, green houses on Bowling Road 55. I haven't I haven't seen a drawing yet. So I'm just wondering, do we know is there like an accessory building or an office or anything also going on? Or is it just the, the 10 green houses? In the chair. There's also I don't know what stage they're at. Yeah. Bridge facility on that property as well. On the top of the house. And then to the east, they were constructing these units. Yes, Tom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through you to Leanne, I see on page 13, uh, 
application 122-23 uh, uh, for the uh, Road 45 bridge over Big Creek. I was just want to say, I think my colleagues will agree with me. We are relieved to see that that has been approved. That has been a very long ongoing project and uh, concern for Norfolk County. So I'm very happy with it. Thank you. Any further questions for Leanne? Okay, then I'll proceed. I have a motion that the LPRCA Board of Directors receive the Section 28 regulations of three permits. Report to date of June, July 5th, 2023 as information. I need a move in a second. Rainey and Tom. Is there any further discussion? Those in favor? That's it. So we have 24 plus one, like uh, Leanne. That's okay. Pardon? Yeah. So uh, through the chair for um, 8B, the application of LTRCA 124-23, LTRCA staff is bringing this to the board of directors attention for approval. In Ontario Regulation 17806, the Board of Directors has the ability to grant permission for a permit for 60 months, five years instead of the normal kind of the normal frame of two years. We are asking that the Board of Directors approve the permit application for the 60 months, and this is for the construction of the Southern Turkey Point Relief Municipal Drain in Turkey Point. The drain will be constructed under the Drainage Act and will include both closed and open ditch drain. The drain will begin at Pelham Street and Ordnance Ave and the outlet into the channel adjacent to Reserve Street and Cockshop Street in Turkey Point. The open ditch portion of the drain will travel along provincially significant wetlands and through the Drainage Act process, um, they had hired a hydrogeologist to confirm that the construction of this drain would not negatively impact the hydrology of the wetland. Both of them are controlled by lake levels. So we've heard through the drainage department that additional approvals are required from other agencies and some of the other agencies, their review timeline is about two years. So by the time they get those approvals, our permit's gonna be expired. So the regulation allows us allows the board of directors to approve projects where there's other legislation that's applicable that it needs permits or construction could go longer than two years. So we're asking for approval um, that for 60 months instead of the 24 months. Any questions for the end? Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the outlet at Clubhouse Road, that is the one that leads up to the marina, correct? Through the chair, yeah, that's correct. So is that that's quite an overgrown area along Clubhouse Road there? Is that um, drainage area sufficient or is that going to have to be cleared as well as part of this construction project? Through the chair, they will have to make sure that they have legal outlet. So they will be doing some construction there. They're going to have to dig out a little bit, I believe. Um, and, Ditch that goes down to that area. It's a bit of green road grade and the turkey point is pretty flat in general. So the ditch that sits along Clubhouse Road, it's going to be storing a lot of that water. And then when the water levels go down, it's going to kind of fill that there. Any further questions for the end? Yes, Chris. I'm not a question as much as uh, similar to Board Member Michelle. It's another project we've been working on for four years. And every time we get one little issue resolved with one level of government, a different department will come up with another one. So I would greatly appreciate a five-year window to get this completed. Um, I think the plan is generally there is a unopened road allowance to the west of where all the houses start, the side of Clubhouse Road that sort of runs out there. That's going to be widened to the ditch that will drain it into that wetland and. Uh, Need one little deep spot, so I uh, appreciate more approval on this one. Any further questions for the end? Seeing none, I have a motion that the LPRCA Board of Directors approves the development application LPRCA 124 slash 23 as presented in the staff report. I need a mover and a seconder. Mike? 
and Peter. Is there any further discussion? I'll call for the vote. Those in favor. That's carried. So now we go to new business. And the first one is the general manager's report. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So on the 26th of um, June, I attended Conservation Ontario meeting, which was um, held by Zoom. And then I went to Toronto for two days for the 27th and 28th. Um, Conservation Ontario organized a two-day meeting for the GMs, which um, was a very good, good event. It was good to get together with the other GMs and just have the thing to talk about the issues. Um, the first day, it was really, um, the agenda was just going through the different kind of the current topics for all the uh, CAs and we could share, um, you know, what's going on. So that was very good interactive. Um, session and then the second day we had um, a good day for media communication for social media written communication verbal communication interviews um, but probably some of you know the facilitator is Brian Lambie he's president of Red Brick Communication he does a lot of work with municipalities and AMO and he attends a lot of the conferences that you guys probably have attended in the past so he was really good if you ever have a chance to um, to attend any training with him, I'd highly recommend it. So um, staff, you heard from Leanne on the new permits. We've had 125 permit applications um, as of June 24th, and that's compared to we're slightly down over last year of 137. Um, we have provided comments on 68 planning applications year to date, and we participated in 13 pre-consultations. Um, We've done some safety training. Um, we, we held a chainsaw safety course at the workshop uh, for 10 employees. And uh, we used a different uh, facilitator and it turned out to be uh, a very good uh, presented course. So we'll be looking to um, use this company going forward for some other training also um, for working at heights. We have some people that will be needing that training. And then we also held our uh, first aid and CPR here in this office on June 20th for 14 employees. Um, we continue to recruit, but we're getting close to having, I think, almost all the positions uh, filled in the parks. And we had a lot of seasonal staff start on July 1st um, as the summer students were out of school. Um, and we did have the, a meeting with PK to see if we could firm up the plans for the um, exterior project at the Center. So we'll be, re be meeting with them in the next couple of weeks to review the, the plans and get final sign off so we can move forward with those projects. So that's all I have. Thank you, Judy. Thanks. Any questions for Judy? Yes, ma'am. Judy, is all the campgrounds uh, full to capacity and everything going good? So um, operations. So on the camp campground side, we we still had um, a few seasonal sites. I want to say maybe five to to fill. Uh, we actually had two people sign up today. One was for Waterford. I know I don't know where the other one went. And one for Norfolk CA. So we're very close to being um, at capacity for the seasonals. And the overnight camping it was a slow start. Um, compared to last year, but Aaron ran some numbers uh, today, and we are uh, compared to last year, we're ahead on the camping revenue overall. Um, so that that's good news, and we do have quite a bit in future revenue because we don't we don't pull that revenue in until they actually camp. But we know based on reservations, um, we have probably what a hundred and. 120,000 sitting there for future camping, which is a good sign. Um, and that's probably up over last year, too. Great, so, thanks. Yeah. Any further questions for Judy regarding the general manager report? Seeing none, I have a motion of the LPRCA Board of Directors receives the general manager report for June 2023 as information. I need a move for a second. Tom and Chris. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Those in favor? That's carried. 
So now we have the 2024 LPRCA budget schedule. Aaron, that's you're going to speak to that. Thank you, John. Uh, yes. Um, so the budget process for conservation authorities has been guided by Ontario Regulation 139.96. Um, that has been revoked on July 1st of this year and has been replaced with Ontario Regulation 402.22, uh, um, budget and apportionment. Um, conservation authorities are still required to uh, circulate the draft budget to member municipalities um, for a 30-day comment period. Um, and the new regulation um, will add another 30-day notice period prior to the board voting on uh, the final uh, budget and levy. Um, so on page 21 of the uh, agenda package, you'll see the schedule there that um, we're proposing for this year. Um, we're still going to follow what we've historically done, uh, looking for guidance from the Finance and Audit Committee on um, increases to the budget and to municipal levy. Um, so the schedule will be the same. However, instead of having the final budget vote in January of the year, um, due to the 30 day notice after consultation, uh, we're gonna have to push that off until the February meeting. Um, but outside of that, um, everything will be the status quo. There's any questions? Any questions for Aaron? Okay. Then I have a motion that the LPRCA Board of Directors receives the 2024 LPRCA budget schedule as information. Move for the second training. Shelly. Any further discussion? Yes, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For you to Aaron. Aaron, is there any issue with operating a month into the calendar year before we get the budget approved or? <laughs> Uh, through the chair, um, no, there won't be um, any issues with cash flow. We're secure that way. Um, we have typically in January sent out our invoices with a 30 day notice period. Um, it will provide a closer back to back for the first 30 day notice to the second quarter notice for April 1st. But there will be a issue. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, please. Okay, I have a, a, a mover and a seconder. I'll call for the vote. Those in favor. That's carried. Okay, so now we go to the Christmas operating schedule. That's you again, Aaron. Yes, thank you. Um, so the authority has um, <clears throat> historically closed operations over the Christmas holiday period, except for uh, emergency response services um, for numerous years now, as long as I've been here. Um, the period includes three working days and three statutory holidays. Um, the board has traditionally granted a complimentary day off with pay for staff on payroll during this period. Um, staff is proposing uh, the office is closed for the holiday period from December 27th through December 29th. Um, if the board decides to grant a complimentary day once again, um, staff will be required to take two days off of vacation or take a unpaid leave. Um, the office would then reopen on January 2nd, 2024. Any questions for Aaron? Okay. Seeing none, uh, I have a motion that the LPRCA Board of Directors closes operation from December 27th to December 29th, 2023, except for emergency response, response, and that staff working to be granted one complimentary day off day with pain, and that the staff are required to utilize two vacation days during the period or take unpaid leave. We move for a second, Dave. And Chris, any further discussion? Those in favor? That's good. So now we have the proposed meeting schedule, and uh, that is Judy. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is just uh, giving the board the information on the meeting schedule for 2024. Um, just so you can have it for your calendar. Uh, we're proposing um, to have an early meeting in January so that we have the time for the 30 day that Aaron talked about, the new 30 day notice for the budget vote. So we would meet on January 3rd and then on February 7th, um, we would have our, our Board of Directors, the elections. No, sorry, we wouldn't do that. We'd do the elections on the third, and then our vote would be on February 7th. So 
a bit different than other years. We usually wait because of the holidays, but we'll have to get things out before uh, the shutdown in, uh, in December of 2023. So yeah, this is really just for information. Are there any questions for Judy regarding the uh, uh, proposed 2024 schedule? Seeing none, I'll call for a uh, mover and seconder. Doug and Rainey. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Those in favor? That's Gary. So now we have the uh, Victoria Dam Class Environmental Assessment Progress Report and Committee Appointment. Leanne, are you handling this one? Yes, yeah, I am. Okay. The purpose of this report is to provide the board with an update as to the progress of the Victoria Class EA that we are completing for the Victoria Dam. And also, we are seeking the appointment of a board member to join the Committee Liaison Committee. So as an update to the progress, we've had our kickoff meeting with Matrix, um, and we've done a meeting with them along with Norfolk County staff. And then we, right after that meeting, we went down to the dam so the consultants could take a look at it. Um, it they did a comprehensive assessment of the area, including examination of the existing infrastructure any, and any potential environmental concerns. So that's well on its way. Part of the environmental assessment process is that we will be putting together a community liaison committee. So this committee will serve as a bridge between the project team and the project community to ensure all stakeholder perspectives are considered through the process. The committee will play a crucial role in providing feedback, sharing information, and facilitate effective communication. The schedule right now for this project has the community liaison committee meeting beginning of September and the beginning of November. And we are seeking a member of the board to participate on the committee if desired. Any questions for the Yes, Mike. Yes, um, I would suggest that the ward counselor for that area, Chris Van Passen, be the representative if he would agree because. He knows the land and the people in that area, so I don't know. That's just a suggestion. Yeah, I would be happy to do that. Uh, I'll take the flag from the neighborhood. <laughs> <then. laughs> Tom, you had a question. Uh, I don't have a question, Mr. Chair. Uh, if uh, Board Member Columbus' uh, suggestion is a motion, I would say it will be part of the motion. Any other questions for Leanne regarding the Victoria Dam Class Environmental Assessment Progress Report? Seeing none, I have a motion. So, pardon? I'll move it. So, Kristen Tasson is going to be our board representative. Well, the motion reads as follows. If the LPR State Board of Directors receives the Victoria Dam Class Environmental Assessment Progress Report as information, that the LPR State Board of Directors approves the following appointment. Chris Van Passen is a member of the Victoria Class Environment Assessment Community Liaison Committee. I have a mover, a seconder, Tom. Any further discussion? Seeing none, a call for the vote. Those in favor? <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for accepting that uh, that uh, appointment. Okay, so um, next we have the watershed conditions update. And Leanne, I think you're going to speak to that too. The purpose of this report is to provide the board of directors uh, just an update as to the watershed conditions. It's been kind of a strange past few months. <laughs> In April, we see. We received a large amount of rain, and then in May, um, it was abnormally dry throughout most of the month leading into the beginning of June. So we just wanted to let you know we've kind of been we've been watching everything, seeing what the precipitation is during, looking at the flows in the rivers and creeks, and looking at kind of what's in our reservoirs, um, and just keeping an eye on it. Um, some are below average, some are above average, but right now we're not. Thinking we won't have to do anything with low water response, but if we need to, we'll start triggering um, that protocol. Lake Erie has begun to decline from its seasonal peak. 
um, and it is anticipated to continue to decline through the month of July. On page 29, there's a nice little graph. And on the right-hand side, you can see um, a red dotted line trending downward. So that's the next six months forecast that the province has put out. Um, the dotted line is the 50th percentile, then of course the probability fifth in the 95th percent. So it's following its normal trend of trending downward. And it's above average, but definitely below what we saw a few years ago that caused a lot of havoc on the lakes. Um, so we'll just continue to monitor the conditions and provide messaging as we need to. Thank you, Dan. Very interesting report. Nice to see Lake Theory State Parks. Um, okay, I have a motion that the LPRCA Board of Directors receives a watershed condition update report as information. A mover and a seconder. Shelly and Rainy. Rainy or was it Doug? Sorry. Okay, uh, Shelly and Doug. Any further discussion? Seeing now, I call to the vote. Those in favor? That's good. So now we have the timber tenders, the bloomers, and live seed. The vase. The vase. Okay. You're going to speak to that, Judy? I am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, this is in front of the board to uh, the recommendation is that the um, board approves the bid put in by Townsend Lumber for the Bloomart track at $41,785 and for the Levisi track quarter lumber at $35,360. Um, the Debbie has provided the maps. The Wilmart track was the donated piece on the Turkey Point Road, which is uh, just over um, almost 38 acres, 37 acres. And the um, Levisi track is in Wyndham on um, concession 11 and it's uh, 20 acres. So um, we've dealt with both of the, the contractors before and um, staff's recommending um, that the board consider those two bids. Any uh, questions for Judy regarding tender? Yes, uh, just through you, are these, uh, these bids, are they, uh, Roughly where they should be as far as being budgeted for, uh, are they high? Are they low? Or pretty well where are they? They um, where we're expected to be. They are uh, good, good bids. The good bids. <laughs> yes, Chris. Well, um, thirty-five thousand dollars on twenty acres. Um, I'm assuming that we're on about fifteen to twenty-year cycle on the harvest on these. Bonds. It's amazing the income you can get on a well managed woodlot. And I wish more people would realize that. The, 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 the province was doing some work a few years ago that a well managed woodlot will make you just as much profit as growing corn and beans. You just got to get used to the 15 year paycheck cycle. Yeah. But I, I'm quite happy with these numbers. Well, uh, that and the fact that. Uh... The total income, lumber income to date is $330,199. And we had uh, budgeted $310,000. So we're moving in the right direction. Okay. So uh, the motion that the, L that the LPRCA Board of Directors accepts the tender submitted by Townsend Lumber Incorporated for Mark Standing Timber at the Bloomer Track. LP-351-23 for a total tender price of $41,765 and Porter Lumber for Mark Standing Timber at the Live Sea Track, LP-352-23 for a total tender price of $35,360. Is there any further discussion? Seeing on move move a second at this. Peter and Ring. Any further discussion? I'll call for the vote. Those in favor? That's carried. 
So now we have the Oak Wilt report. And Judy, you're doing that? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, I just asked uh, Debbie Fain to put together some information on the Oak Wilt. Um, it has come to Ontario now. It's been it's in two locations in Niagara Falls and an area up by Barry. So it's quite concerning because of how impact, like the impact that it can have on the oak stands. And we do have a large uh, amount of oak trees in our forest. So I would say Debbie estimated about 90% of our land, um, like the forest cover, we have 90% this forest and of that approximately 20% of the tree coverage is oak of some species. So um, we just wanted to bring it forward as information for the board um, that it is here. We're going to look at um, like an action plan with staff to do some permanent plot so that we can do some laundering on the ground um, and just keep an eye on this. And staff have been attending. There's been some webinars offered, and they they are continuing to uh, learn about this and how to identify it. And hopefully, we don't get it in our forest tracks. Um, but it is definitely moved into Ontario, so um, we'll see where it goes. They um, we have put up something with our reservations because they're saying don't bring you know firewood. This is even more important not to you know, bring firewood in to burn, burn, you know, buy firewood in the area that you're camping. And um, yeah, so we were looking at some different, possibly we might have to change some harvesting protocols. We're not sure how uh, fast is it going to spread, but we, we got to be proactive the best we can. So um, I'm not sure how, where this is going. It's just information at this point. There's only oak trees? Yes, okay. and more on red oak. Um, red oak, white oak, they seem to say can uh, get sick, but it can't. They can survive, but red oak it can be very quick. Um, how long it takes to kill an oak tree? Red oak. So, Any questions for Judy? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I. Uh, what 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 is the uh, antidote? I guess is a spray. So, yeah, so there is some preventative measures that um, there is a treatment where you inject it um, into the tree, but once the tree is infected, there's really no saving that tree. It's really due to preventative um, to avoid the spread to other things because it's being transported by the beetles and for the insect that because it's very sweet, they like to go to the meat and then they go and infect other trees. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of um, trying to keep it from spreading to the other trees, from what I understand. Have you noticed, uh, is there some moss that are around in the oak swamp again? Um, yeah, I don't have from staff exactly what, we do have some test plots on that gypsy moss also. We did do the aerial spraying, but it's not to the level that it was um, in the, that was, I think now that was two or three years ago, but 2021, 2020, we did the actual spray. So, um, yeah, I, I, staff haven't raised it with me on being a, like a, a large amount of gypsum. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've got old, and, uh, that gypsum mouse. Right there. now? Okay. Yeah, and there, uh, I've got a couple of red maples that I just covered in it. So I, I sprayed them, but I mean, they're small. Right. Things, but, you just seem to go after everything. Of them. Oh, on the oak, yeah. It's supposed to be normally it's on um, the oak trees are attacked. So. I used the burlap from Oh, something. did you? <laughs> but there I I sprayed for it. Uh, I'm not sure if it was but I did the aerial spray a while ago and my neighbor did it too. And uh, you know, I thought it was uh, beneficial, but I don't I don't I see all kinds of they're back, they're back in abundance. That's a cycle. Mike, good question. Yeah, will we be putting out a press release to notify woodlot owners to be on the watch for this problem? Um, we, um, well, we we are looking at putting something on social media um, about this just to bring it to attention. 
um, you know, landowners, but the other like woodlot owners association things are all being involved in the information coming out from the CFI. So I don't know that we would do a press release, but we're definitely going to do some social media and Zyme actually has put some wording together. Great, great. Thanks, Robert. Yes, some board members may re recall that I had mentioned this about two years ago. It was in New York State and it's finally coming. It reminds me of the ash uh, board. Mm -hmm. just, just by way of comment, I, I have a 20 acre woodlot that we've harvested for generations. My great grandfather had it. All the birch trees died. My grandfather had it. All the chestnut trees died. I had it. All the elm trees died. I had it. All the ash trees died. My son has it now. And it looks like all the old trees are going to die. So the next generation, hopefully the maples don't die. It's, it's, it's bad when these it big sad. trees within a year go from a Magnificent tree mm -hmm. to a bunch of firewood. So, as far as any other questions for Judy? No, no way. Yeah. Seeing none, uh, that I have a motion that the LPRCA board of directors receives the Oak Wilt Outbreak report as information. I need a mover and second. Stu and Shelly. Any further discussion? Those in favor? That's scary. So now we uh, we go into closed session. I have a motion that the LPRC Board of Directors is now entering the closed session to discuss a trade secret or scientific, technical, commercial, or financial information that belongs to the authority and has monetary value or potential monetary value and position, plan, procedure, criteria, or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf of the authority. Can I have a move second? Mm -hmm. Chris, I'm sorry, Tom and Chris. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Those in favor, that's carried. We are now in closed session. Well, as we have now um, adjourned out of the closed session, we are back into open session. And uh, our next meeting is September the 6th, 2023. And this meeting is now adjourned.